if you work full time, assuming you don't take any vacation throughout the year, you probably work around 40 hours a week for 52 weeks a year, which totals to a little over 2,000 hours a year that you work. Now, I know some of you work more than 40 hours and some of you work less than 40 hours, but let's just assume for this illustration that all of us worked 40 hours a week. Can you wrap your head around the fact that we each spend around 2,000 hours of our lives at work every year? That's a lot of hours, right? Now, now here's something funny to think about. In 1967, a Senate subcommittee was told that with the advancements in technology that we were experiencing at the time, they believed that by 1985, the average American would only work 22 hours a week for a total of 27 weeks a year. Now, to put that into perspective, that's about 600 hours a year. In other words, if all of us worked 40 hours a week, um, we should only be working a quarter of that time by now. Now, wouldn't that be nice if all we did was work a quarter of the time we work now, right? The, the reality is that we are the busiest generation to ever exist in the United States. We're always in a hurry, always behind, and lately I have been hearing from more and more people who feel like they're burning out and they're ready to quit their jobs. We do not live with an excess of free time like that uh, report predicted to the Senate subcommittee. In fact, we live with a lack of free time. And if we don't fix it soon, we are in for a huge problem. So how do we fix it? Well, in my last message, we talked about learning to be present with Jesus, right? Practicing presence. And we learned that it is important to set time aside where we let everything else wait and put our attention fully on Jesus, at least for a couple of minutes every day, right? Today, I want to share a second practice that's kind of like the first one, but it goes deeper. And this uh, practice is Sabbath. In Exodus chapter 20, God is giving Moses the Ten Commandments. And in verse 8, God says this, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. Now, essentially, God is saying for six days you're allowed to work, but on the seventh day you have to keep it holy, right? And you have to keep it holy by resting and not doing any work. Now, this makes sense if we consider the creation story in Genesis, where God created everything in six days and then rested on the seventh, right? God is commanding the Israelites, and really us as well, to live uh, that same pattern that God modeled for us in creation. But what is Sabbath? And what does Sabbath uh, look like? And, and what does it even mean to rest and to not do any work, right? Is that even possible? Well, I want, to unpack our, uh, under, I want to unpack our understanding of Sabbath because as a society, we are horrible at practicing it. And I really don't think that it's because we blatantly want to uh, avoid having a day of rest or having a day where we don't work, right? I don't know a single person who would say they don't want that. I think the reason we don't practice Sabbath is because we don't fully understand what Sabbath is or how to live out the Sabbath. So let's talk about that for a minute. Let's begin by deconstructing some of the things that uh, we believe about Sabbath. So when God says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy by resting and not doing any work, there are three things I want you to know. First, God is not telling us that we need to go to the office six days out of the week and only spend one day with our family and friends. Now, I remember the first time I heard this verse or I read it, I thought to myself, I'm already tired and I'm only working five days a week, right? Why does God want me to work six days a week? That, that, that's not what it's saying. Essentially, and this is a very simplistic understanding of this verse, but God is telling us, go to the office for five days. Use one day at home to mow the yard, to do the laundry, to clean the house, to run errands. But then on that seventh day, just rest, just relax. Just stop worrying about everything right. See, the six days of work literally refers to this understanding that you have six days to get everything done. Everything done at work, everything done at home, everything with your hobbies, anything you need to do, you have six days to get it done. But on the seventh day, you rest. Th this leads me to the second thing I want you to know about Sabbath. If you consider Sabbath simply a day off when you get things done that need to get done, you're not really practicing Sabbath. See, Sabbath is much deeper than that. Sabbath literally means to stop and to do nothing. 
So if on your Sabbath day you're having to get anything done, if you're running around trying to get stuff taken care of, if you have an ounce of worry on that day, you are not practicing Sabbath. Now, the third thing I want you to know about Sabbath is that uh, practicing Sabbath does not mean that you spend the whole day at church. Sabbath does not mean that you have to open your Bible and read it all day and, and pray all day long, right? Sabbath doesn't mean that you have to sit and meditate and just be contemplative all day, right? These things are good, don't get me wrong, and you should probably make time for them on your Sabbath. But Sabbath is not a glorified church day. It's much deeper than that. Okay, so we've deconstructed what we understand Sabbath to be, or at least some of the common definitions that I hear about Sabbath. Now let's talk about what Sabbath actually looks like and what difference it can make in our lives if we actually practiced it. So here's the best explanation I can come up with to explain what it looks like to practice Sabbath. I want you to think of the perfect Christmas day. For those 24 hours, you probably had no deadlines to meet, no meetings to get to, no work stuff was on your mind. For those 24 hours, you probably didn't have to deal with traffic. You you didn't deal with long lines at the store. You were just present with your family and friends. You, You ate, you laughed, you shared stories, you opened gifts together, you gave thanks for each of those gifts, and the whole time, you were subconsciously worshiping God. See, you worship God by going to church on Christmas Eve, but you also worship God as you shared a meal. You worship God by putting a nativity up in your living room. You worshiped God as you remembered that the whole reason you were celebrating that day was because you knew that Jesus had been born, and that was reason enough to put everything else on pause, even if it was for just 24 hours. You want to know what Sabbath looks like? It looks like a perfect Christmas day. When it comes to Sabbath, we gear up for it. We plan out the day in advance. We do all we can to make it special, and we approach it with anticipation. It's the same thing we do leading up to a holiday like Christmas, right? We gear up for Christmas. We plan out the day in advance. We plan out what we're going to make, what we're going to eat, how we're going to do the day. Like We plan the day in advance. We make it special for everyone who's going to be celebrating with us, and we approach it with anticipation. We prepare and celebrate Christmas the same way we should prepare and uh, celebrate Sabbath. See, what would it look like if we practiced Christmas Day every single week? Minus the family drama and the stress that come with the holidays, right? But what would it look like if once a week we planned our meal for Sabbath ahead of time? What would it look like if we ran our errands ahead of time so that on our Sabbath we didn't have to do any of them? What would it look like if we finished everything we could finish during the week, and then on Sabbath, we said, all of that that work can wait till tomorrow, right? What would it look like if one day a week, there were no alarms, no deadlines, no errands, no working on work, no cleaning the house, no mowing the yard? What if once a week, we enjoyed a really good meal with friends on the patio, and all of us agreed to let the world wait because we were feasting that night? What if once a week, We went for a relaxing walk with our friends or with our significant others, and and we didn't go for a walk to close the exercise rings on our Apple Watch. We went for a walk just to enjoy the beauty of this world. God says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Six days you will do everything you need to get done, including the work it takes to prepare for your Sabbath. But make sure that it's not all work. Make sure that the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Make sure that the seventh day is a day where you don't worry about any work or worry about anything that you have to do. On that seventh day, it's about enjoying creation. It's about resting. It's about giving thanks to God, and it's about recognizing God's goodness and God's faithfulness. Friends, weekly Sabbath is possible. We just have to gear up for it every week. We have to plan out the day in advance so that we don't create any stress in our lives the day of. We have to be intentional about making it special, and we have to approach it with anticipation. And if we do, I really believe that even though we are the, the, 
We are working more hours than ever before. We are the busiest generation ever. We can live a much less hurried and busy life than any generation before us. Once a week, practice stopping everything. Six days, get everything done. And on the seventh day, rest. Keep it holy. Worship God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks that you have modeled for us what it means to practice Sabbath. God, you created in six days, and on that seventh day, you rested. And God, I pray that we too can live out that model. May we work for six days, not just in the office, but may we get all our work done in six days. Can we, may we do everything we can get done in six days. And at the end of those six days, may we rest. God, whatever we didn't get done, it can wait for the next day. But on that one day, we rest. Help us to live this out. Help us to believe it's possible and help us to find rest in you. God, I pray this in your most precious and most glorious name. And all God's people said, amen. Well, hey, I want to thank you for joining us. And I want to invite you, if you want to go deeper into this, I really want to encourage you to text the word GROW, G-R-O-W, to the number 225-307-0662. And here's a reason why I really want you to consider doing this this week. At the end of our home sheet that you're going to receive, uh, there's going to be a prayer, and it's going to be a prayer for welcoming the Sabbath. And what I want to encourage you to do this week is uh, prepare for Sabbath this next week. Uh, you know, make plans, anticipate it, uh, get everything done you need to get done for it. And maybe on Friday night or Saturday night, whenever you decide to practice Sabbath, say this prayer with whoever lives in your house or with some friends over dinner. Say this prayer and then enter into the Sabbath and rest. So I really want to encourage you to, to again, text the word GROW, G-R-O-W, to the number 225-307-0662. You'll get a link to a home sheet, and you'll have access to that prayer that I want to encourage you to practice. Well, I want to thank you for joining us. I look forward to uh, seeing you again next week as we dive deeper into this Eliminating Hurry series. And uh, just remember, I love you, God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a great week.